The New York Mets are still looking for their president of baseball operations. And today I reached my breaking point on today's show. Going to talk about why I can no longer try to dissect what's going on in the Mets search for a new head of baseball operations. You are locked on Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're listening to Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Locked On Mets is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Now on today's show, we're going to talk about the Mets search for a president of baseball operations and why I'm fed up with it. Because I spent a couple hours today researching a podcast, putting it together, all about Scott Harris, the GM of the Giants. There was some reports earlier on on Monday that he was a prime candidate. The Mets would really like for him to take over as the president. I talked about how that related to other reports from over the weekend that Brian Sabian had threw his hat in the ring and wanted to be the next president of the Mets. And then what happens about an hour after I finished recording and editing and getting this podcast together for you guys, Scott Harris had already pulled his name out of consideration. Those reports come out. And once again, we are left wondering who will be the next president of the Mets. On the first segment of today's show, I'm going to talk about what I just went through there, how Scott Harris pulled his name out, why he pulled his name out, What is the latest with Brian Sabian and any executive coming from the Giants? In the second segment, I'll talk about who's left when it comes to this search for a president. And in the final segment, I'll talk about why I really don't care to dissect any of this anymore because at this point, let's just wait and see who the Mets hire. Before we get to any of that, though, I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at FinkelsteinRyan. You can also find some of my writing about the Mets at JustBaseball.com. So over the weekend, we get these reports that Brian Sabian is interested in in coming over to the Mets. And and Disha Thasser was the the person who went out for the New York Daily News and got this reporting done about Sabian. And basically, it said that he is looking for another challenge in his life. Right now, he's been relegated to a role with the Giants where he's just an advisor. If you don't know, Sabian was the GM from 97 through 2014, won those three World Series in succession, the even years, 2010, 2012, 2014. Then he moved up to be the executive VP, got a new GM, Bobby Evans, to come in and run the day-to-day, seated those responsibilities, but still oversaw the way baseball operations were run. Things don't go well. Sabian ends up being relegated to that advisor role. As far as Zadi gets hired to head up the operations, He brings in Scott Harris, and that is the group that has suddenly taken the Giants and turned them into one of the best teams in the National League and a real contender for years to come. Now, Scott Harris is a San Francisco native, so it is understandable that he's got a GM job. He's working under a great mind in Farenzati. They've built out a great team. He wants to stay put, and that totally makes sense, and apparently If he had wanted the Mets president job, it was his. That is how conversations went. That is how the Mets regarded him. They really did think he could have been the guy, but ultimately it wasn't a good fit for him. And at times, I think we get so carried away by this allure that, that the Mets are this job with all the money in the world, the big market, who wouldn't want to come here? But as we've seen with Billy Bean, who decided to stay on the West Coast because He didn't want to uproot his family, as we just saw with Harris. These are still guys that have lives, that have families, that that have track records in certain organizations that have built relationships in those organizations. And as much as you could think that the money and, and the job and everything about New York would be so enticing that these these guys would be chopping at the bits, that's not always the case. There is other things that get put into the equation when it comes to deciding what you do with your career. And it's understandable when it comes to the Sabian element and I, of this story, 
and what again I talked about on an entire podcast that is now in the lost files because I was talking about why Scott Harris was a better fit than Sabian because Sabian at 65 it is an executive that sure he might want to get back into this, but what does that look like now as the game continues to go more and more towards analytics? Is Sabian the guy to come in and, and head up all those departments? Is he going to be able to bring in other executives under him that can build on an infrastructure that you would trust? I wasn't completely blown away with that idea. I did think that if they hired Sabian, and it's still on the table, apparently he really wants the job, clearly by the reporting where a source close to Sabian indicated that he would jump at the opportunity that is clearly showing your hand that, hey, I haven't gotten a call. Steve, call me up. I'd love to talk. I'd love to be the president. He's basically trying to audition for the job before even getting that casting call. I get it, okay? So so if he comes in, he is a Hall of Fame executive. I understand why fans would get excited, but we've gotten so wrapped up in big names and we've gotten so wrapped up in the different organizations around baseball. You want to poach somebody from Tampa because they are the smartest team out there. You want to poach somebody from Milwaukee because Milwaukee has David Stearns, who's brilliant. And so if he works for David Stearns, that's a, a high level executive you want. Maybe you want someone from LA because it's the Dodgers and it's, it's the, this East Coast Dodgers the Mets are trying to set up. So you poach somebody from that front office to establish yours on this coast. I get all of it. But at the same time, I'm at the point here where it's hard for me to invest myself in any of these cases because as soon as you invest yourself in a Scott Harris, and I did my due diligence today, I watched videos, I see the guy talk, I sold myself on him. I said, man, this guy's 34, seems like a brilliant guy, comes in. He knows exactly how the game is going. He was part of such a cutting-edge team. It made a ton of sense. But we cannot, in the media or anywhere else, as a fan, you, no matter what your perspective is, until you talk to these people, which none of us have that luxury, you have no idea what's going through their minds, what entices them about the certain opportunities. And so it, it's just a guessing game. And I, I'm really done just... just <laughs> trying to figure this thing out when none of us have the proper information. Follow Mike Mayer on Twitter. He has been great with giving us updates throughout this process. There's others out there who are, you know, going out, they're finding their sources, they're figuring out names. And it's most of the time when names come off the board, because generally that is how this process is going. The Mets are being more tight lipped and that's a good thing. But I can no longer sit here and do podcasts where I tell you about why this candidate fits until we're narrowed down to a point where there's two or three names left or a guy's hired. Because until we get to that point, it's just not worth wasting our energy anymore, devoting so much time and, and putting so much stakes attached to a single name. Because then when that name falls out, you get the perception that the Mets are failing here. And I don't believe that's the case. That's what I want to talk about a little bit. I want to talk about what's left on the board, but more importantly, why this is still a process that could be running smoothly right now at the Mets, and you should not overreact to whatever has been reported or this perception that the Mets just cannot get a hire and cannot get the job done under Steve Cohen. One reason to repair and maintain your cars is to save money. So why would you choose to spend 30%, 50%, maybe even 100% more for the exact same amount of parts that are changed to a new car dealership when you can just go to rockauto.com, a family business that's been serving auto parts to customers online for 20 years. They have everything you could want, from engine control modules to brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks and have it delivered directly to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle then choose the brand specifications and prices you prefer. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you. Amazing selection. Reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. All right. So let's just go through a running list of who's left on the board. Which names have been mentioned that could still realistically fall to the mess when it comes to their search for a new president. You got Peter Bendix, which is maybe more of a GM candidate, but 
He is the vice president of baseball development for the Tampa Bay Rays, has been in that organization for over a decade, starting as an intern. Another one of these guys who is a brilliant you know, statistical analyst who has proven time and again that he can implement a game plan, and that is why he has risen through the ranks in one of the most cutting-edge front offices in baseball. You have Josh Burns still on the table. This is a guy with the Dodgers right now who's already previously headed up baseball operations with other teams. He is right now technically the number two, I believe, to uh, Andrew Freeman out there. The senior vice president of baseball operations could come in and be the president of the Mets. He's 51 years old, a little bit older than some of these other names we've seen floated. And it appears that Steve Cohen is maybe leaning younger, maybe wants that younger executive that's hungry. And I'm totally on board with that. But Burns could be the best of both worlds where he's still, you know, in the in the younger sphere. He's not Sabian at 65, but he's got the experience and the pedigree. So that's still a name on the table. You got Matt Arnold who is the GM of the Brewers under Stearns. That's the number two there. The Mets obviously were not granted permission to talk to Stearns, so this would be a way that you could end up getting Arnold to come in. And you know what? Maybe this is a real galaxy brain plan by Steve Cohen. There's now been some other reports that the Mets could be looking more at a GM, not a president, once again, very similar to last year. And if that's the case, maybe the Mets know something. Stearns only under contract for one more year. Could there be a chance that you hire Matt Arnold, wait a year, then get Stearns as the president? I don't know, maybe, but all of this is a guessing game, all of it. And so at this point, to me, it just seems foolish to try to say, yes, Matt Arnold's the guy I want. Yes, Peter Bendix is the guy I want. All of them are good candidates. I've talked about Michael Hill in the past. I think he's a good candidate. Doesn't seem like there's really any smoke there anymore. Was interviewed last year. Maybe didn't get along with Steve Cohen. We really don't know. Apparently, I don't believe from the reports that I've seen that he's been reached out to come back in for another interview. So maybe that's not on the table. I'm at a point here where all I want to see at the end of the day is whoever is brought in here. I want them to have full autonomy to make baseball decisions and to have a leash where they're allowed to get a couple of years to build this thing the right way from the top down to establish an infrastructure and to grow over time. The last thing I want is to go through this again next off season. And it's not just because I hate talking about this stuff. It's not just because these searches uh, make you want to pull your hair out because all it is, is again, a guessing game and names thrown out. We sit there, we all dream, what could it be if Theo was the Mets GM? And then suddenly Theo pulls his name out. That never gets off the ground. There's so many of these stories. There's so many different candidates that are thrown out there. And part of it is because this is a team that is maybe covered more closely than any other team in baseball. Uh, you know, there's so many beat writers, there's so many reporters, there's so many people who are trying to get a scoop on the Mets situation. And when you get to that point, you don't know who is pushing what narrative. You don't know if Brandon Gomes has, has people that are pushing a narrative that he's a front runner for the Mets to leverage the situation with LA and get a promotion and a raise. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, I think with the Sabin report, it's kind of obvious where that one came from. But again, there's so many tea leaves to follow. There's so many things and there's so many people that have so many different motives in these situations that it's just impossible to read. But there is still an executive that could be part of this franchise moving forward that I do want to spend a little time talking about. That's Zach Scott. I want to talk about how he could stay with the organization because there were some reports about that today. And I also want to talk about what a new front office could look like under Steve Cohen and what could be the holdup in, in getting this done at this stage of the early, early, early off season. Bet online is back and better than ever. Now featuring a new web interface for the start of the basketball season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online remains your number one spot for all of the basketball and football action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using the promo code Locked on from basketball, football, baseball, 
NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. So there was some reporting today about Zach Scott that I want to touch on before I avoid talking about the front office for a couple of days until some concrete stuff comes out. And basically that report was that Zach Scott is still in limbo. The Mets GM was set aside after the DUI and he's still suspended or maybe he's on an administrative leave. I don't remember the the exact proper term, but the Mets are waiting to see how the legal process will play out. They're waiting to make their big hire in the front office. And then whoever that GM or president is, they will be part of the decision on what happens with Zach Scott. I don't think Zach Scott's a bad baseball mind. I've talked about him on many podcasts in the past, how I thought overall he did a pretty solid job for the Mets in his first year as the GM. He was able to extract really good value out of Steven Matt. You end up getting Khalil Lee out of multiple trades. Khalil Lee, now a top 10 prospect for the Mets. The Mets ended up finding talent throughout the season like Billy McKinney. Then they turned that talent around and got another prospect in Carlos Rincon. I think that if you look at the team defense, the way the Mets really improved in that regard this year, that had Zach Scott's fingerprints on it. So I think Scott can help a team. I think that this is not as cut and dry as the Porter situation where Jared Porter proved to be a disgusting human being from the the text that we saw, the way he harassed that reporter. That was a clear one strike you're out situation with Zach Scott. While I don't condone drinking and driving, I do think that someone could make amends for that mistake. We still don't know all the details that went into his arrest. We still don't know what the legal process is going to say about Scott and what his future is going to be as regards to, I don't know, pr- probation or, or what he's going to have to do uh, to, to make up for that mistake that he made. But I don't believe that Zach Scott's career in baseball is over. And if it contains with the Mets, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but you are in a position now where you can demote him to a different role, assuming you bring somebody else in At the end of the day, when it comes to hiring a front office executive, the bottom line is the game has changed, right? You can't just go on gut and gumption and this guy's a leader of men. It's not about that anymore. You need to bring in really smart people who know how to analyze the numbers and implement a game plan because if you aren't implementing a game plan when the team in the other dugout is, you are going to lose more times than not. As much as you want to talk about the numbers are ruining the game and people can hate analytics all they want to, The analytically driven teams are the ones that continue to find themselves in the World Series, in the playoffs. Houston Astros, year after year, they are in the mix. They're in the World Series. Why does that happen? They have good players, but they find good players through analytics. They find the guys that that have value that's down, and and they're able to rehabilitate them. You look at the Giants. I did a whole podcast, like I said, on Scott Harris. Look what they did with Kevin Gosman. Kevin Gosman, someone who was a four starter, they identify that there is something there that can be worked on. They get him into their pitching system, and suddenly he can carry a rotation for the first half of the season when the Giants were the best team in baseball. That is what you're looking for. But right now, when it comes to the search to get it, again, we don't know anything. We don't know what these executives have on their resume. We don't know how they process information. We don't know how they work the, the spreadsheets and crunch the numbers. We don't know anything. So as we go through this process and what's left of the process here waiting, that's what I encourage fans to do. Just sit back and wait. Don't get carried away by the report that this name is in, this name is out. Wait till something concrete comes along and then we can judge. And then we can decide if the Mets made the right hire. I don't think that this job is so unappealing that no one is going to come on board. I think that there is certainly some people that can look at this situation like a Scott Harris and say, do I really want to go there where there's still Sandy Alderson above me? I could maybe be the president, but am I really the guy or, or is there Alderson still in my way getting between me and the owner? Apparently Steve Cohen is conducting these interviews himself. I saw that report today, which is good. I like that. I like Alderson maybe starting to take a little bit of a backseat. That that's a good sign, but I'm sure there is other executives that won't want to work with Cohen because of the Twitter persona and this, this idea that he could fly off the handle at any time. But maybe that's not the right person for the job anyway. 
So what you want to have happen here is you want to find somebody who can work with Steve Cohen, who is eager to work with Steve Cohen, that has the resume for the position. That's all that anybody should care about at this point. And I do like that the Mets are more tight-lipped now than they've been in the past, and that should not bother fans because that is a sign of strength, that this isn't a wolpon led regime that has their mouthpieces and will try to paint the story through the press in whatever way they believe reflects best on them. That They will go and they'll find some random reporter by, I don't know, maybe it's <coughs> Martino. <coughs> Martino. <coughs> Sorry. A little thing in my throat about Andy Martino. Um, yeah, so so maybe you'll find somebody out there like that who is working for SNY. And, and if you're the Will Pons, you will paint a narrative through that selected reporter. We don't know if Steve Cohen has a reporter that he leaks things to at this point. That is not clear at this stage, but I am hoping that the fact that this process has begun to go underground, I think that is a positive thing moving forward. And hopefully the net result is a higher that we can all appreciate. But when it comes to this show and Locked On Mets, I have had people asking me in the DMs, in the comments, when are you going to talk about Sabian? When are you going to talk about executive X, Y, and Z? This is my, my final podcast when it comes to talking about front, the front office, talking about these executives until I either A, have a beat writer on that can shed some light or B, something concrete comes out. If it's just me talking about an executive, it, it's not coming. Okay. I'm not going to do any more shows like this, not just because I had a wasted episode today, but because to me, it is a wasteless exercise of, of energy at this point. Let's be patient. The Mets are going to hire somebody. There's going to be a lot of excitement this offseason. We just got to practice that patience, wait a little bit. Those things will come in due time and probably sooner rather than later. Anyway, that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked on Mets. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked on Mets. Thank you for making Locked on Mets your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked on MLB Prospects. Hosted by my guy, R.M. Layton, Locked on MLB Prospects is the best show to go to to hear about the stars of tomorrow. Follow Locked on MLB Prospects wherever you get podcasts.